So let's move on to something slightly less heavy. I guess that all of you have heard of Tinder. It's a dating app. Yeah. I have a theory that Tinder has actually done more for public health than we give it credit for. Yeah. We could discuss it forever, because despite Tinder doing the very best job they can, more people than ever before are single. And that is actually a huge problem. Because the single strongest predictor for loneliness is not your age. It is whether or not you're in a relationship. As a single woman, I am four times more likely to be haunted by loneliness than women who are in a relationship. But the silver lining is that in this matter, I'm very lucky to be a girl because that guy, he is 10 times more likely being haunted by loneliness than his mates who are in relationships. And yes, it is a fact that single people are more miserable than those who are hitched. You would think that by 2017 we would have figured out how to properly connect people. But it looks like we're getting worse at it. Loneliness has become a pandemic. It does not discriminate on age or gender or borders. It happens all over the world. And it happens most frequently to those of us who are already vulnerable. And as I said in the beginning, I don't think I can stress this enough. The constant flight or f uh, fight mode results in a 29% increased risk of heart diseases. That's equivalent to smoking 15 cigarettes every day. It is more dangerous than being an alcoholic. And on top of these physical risks, there's one more thing. Feeling lonely doubles your likelihood of getting dementia. Obviously, there's an enormous individual cost in that of feeling all alone. There's also an enormous public cost. People getting sick is expensive. It's extremely expensive. And to give you a specific example of how loneliness is expensive, we can stay on dementia. Because 66% of all the money we spend on mental health care is spent on people suffering from dementia. And loneliness doubles your risk of developing it. We're gonna add one more number, 12%. 12% of the Norwegian population is daily smokers. 60% of us, maybe more, are haunted by loneliness. We know that both of them gives you an equally increased risk of heart disease and strokes. So it's both extremely dangerous, and one of them is even exceptionally painful. The governments of the world is clearly focusing on only one of them. But what can you really do? We set up taxes for cigarettes and then we ban smoking inside. It is uh, quite obvious that we can't use the same methods for curing loneliness. So where do we start if we want to have an impact on a global scale? Well, I started with studying the opposite of psychology, so I chose computer science. And the debate around the impact of technology uh, on loneliness is growing. Some argue that the use of technology is replacing human contact. Others argue that technology is all we need to establish new relations. I think the debate lacks one key insight, because it is not about the technology at all. We could say that it is somewhat about what the technology does and somewhat about how we as consumers use technology. But most importantly, it's about the people who develop the technology that we use. They choose how it works and what it does. And different things does different things. And it's people who develop the stuff we use. Developments in communication technology have emerged rapidly. But unfortunately, technology is almost always developed to make efficient people more efficient. I think everybody should get rich and famous and do everything they ever dreamed of. So they can see that it's not the answer. I was lonelier than I had ever been during those.
message sent to me could help me turn my health around? Could a text message sent to someone else help them turn their health around? And could a million text messages sent to a million people help them turn their health around? And could we fundamentally digitize empathy to present a scalable solution to trends in global chronic disease? Four years ago, I decided to find out. I quit my job and I co-founded a healthcare startup built on the idea of digitizing empathy. We hired some of the most empathetic people we could find and we partnered them with people struggling with chronic disease. We then set about sending helpful messages, coaching them, holding them accountable, being cheerleaders for them, and we did so digitally. We sent text messages, we made phone calls, we wrote caring emails. And we built a process around this to make this repeatable.
Victor feel good. Yeah. Yeah. She worked out okay. If you like, I can provide cool training on a bike. It is. It's Oh, okay. I'll think about that. Okay. We need a. See you later, Joe. This is all. And here.
Thank you. 